Krause, how you doing? And Mr. Krause, you can call me Mr. Key. I've already put my name on the paper. By the way, this is June 2019. If you just took the exam, sorry I couldn't get the video up right away. New York State restricts that. This is going to be part one, 13 through 24. Now, if you haven't taken the exam yet and you're here to check your answers, that's great. If you're here just to copy what I'm saying to you, not so good. So come here, tr try the problems first, and then if you can't do them, then ask for help, and then see if I can give you some help with this, okay? So we have already done parts one through three. You can find all of this stuff on my website, mrkrausmath.com. Um, they're not up there right now, but they will be up there very shortly. So you can find all those videos all there. Just click under algebra. You'll find them. They're down at the, it'll be at the bottom. Anyway, I didn't think this was that bad of an exam. Let's see how you did. I've already done the part one. So we're going to go down here to problem number 13. Oh, always these stats questions. A group of students was trying to determine the proportion of candies in a bag that are blue. The company claims that 24% of candies in a bag are blue. The simulation was run 100 times with a sample size of 50 based on the premise that 24% of the candies are blue. Everybody knows the blue M&Ms taste the best. I'm just saying. So it looks like about centered. It looks about centered. It looks like, I don't know. Approximate normal results of the simulation are shown below. The simulation results in a mean of, so an X bar of 0.254 and a standard deviation of X bar equal to 0.060. And they want a 95% center of the data. Oh, I hate the way they talk about this stuff. So all we got to do is, let me get rid of the stuff from the previous video. We got to take this 0.254 and we're going to subtract off. Now you got to remember 95% means two standard deviation. We're going to subtract off two and then we're going to come over here and we're going to add two. So 0.134 to 0.374. There she goes. There's the answer. All right. All right, moving on. So this is that famous question, when does the y equal the y? So they're trying to say, for what value of x when you plug it in, do the y's equal the y's? So really what we're looking for is the y's equal. So negative 4.8, don't have one. Negative 6, don't have one. Negative 4.7, don't have one. 2.5, ooh, wait, 2.53 and 2.53. Now what are the x values? The x values are 8.52. So the answer is 8.52. When? Uh, what are the x values for when those equal each other? That's always a tricky question. I'll bet a lot of people put 2.53. The answer is 8.52. All right, let's do this one. Now, remember, this is a badass negative. You've got to be really careful with that. We're going to distribute it at the end. Now, I'm going to show you how to do this the right way, and then I'm going to show you how to do it using a trick. Do not worry about that negative for now. So we get 9x squared. Now, this is minus 6xi and minus 6xi, so that's minus 12 xi. And here comes the tricky part. Negative 2i times negative 2i is positive 4i squared. Now, this here is really positive 4 times negative 1. So that's negative 4. So here's what we have. 6 minus 9x squared minus 12xi minus 4. Now we can distribute the negative. You couldn't distribute the negative before, but now I can distribute it. So it's minus 9x squared plus 12xi plus 4. Now when I combine all things and put it in standard form, the minus 9x squared goes first, the plus 12xi goes second, and then when I got positive 6 and positive 4, that would be plus 10. So I'm guessing we're going with choice one. But again, I'm not 100% sure, so I want to check using my calculator. So I'm going to come over to the old calculator and say, please, Mr. Dumb Machine, help me out. I'm going to store any value I want into x. And then I'm going to type in the problem. 6 minus parenthesis 3x minus 2i. squared. You get some silly number. And then I'm going to type in my answer, which is negative 9x squared 
plus 12x i plus 10. Now, hopefully this is right. Look at that, baby. Woo! Here's the answer. All right, this question was fun. A number, we'll call it x, minus 20 times the reciprocal. Well, what is the reciprocal of x? Oh, 1 over x equals 8. So this is really x over 1 minus 20 over x equals 8 over 1. Now, what's my common denominator? x. So if I add an x there, I got an x here, and I got an add an x here. And I already had an x at the middle one, so now I don't need the x anymore. So I have x squared minus 20 equals 8 x, oops, x, x squared minus 8x minus 20 equals 0, x minus 10, x plus 2, the factoring is not that bad, and I get two answers, x equals 10, and x equals negative 2. Now I want to check that, so I'm going to take 10 and store it into x. So I'm going to take 10, and I'm going to subtract 20 times the reciprocal, 1, oh, this should be x, 1 over x, and hopefully it equals 8. Yes! Now we're going to take negative 2 and store it into x. Now we're going to type in that same equation. Hopefully it equals 8. Yes! So the answer is positive 10 and negative 2. Moving on, kiddos. 17. A savings account S has an initial value of 50 bucks. The account grows at 2% rate compounded n times per year. T. According to this function below. Oh, I remember this question. This question really probably does not belong on an Algebra 2 test. Well, I don't know what happened. I just recorded for like 10 minutes and it didn't record. So I'm going to drink some water in my RPI mug. Let's get going. This question was tough. This question was tough. But one of the things I discussed with my students, and I don't know if your teachers did, um, was the fact that when banks loan you money, they loan you at this rate, PERT, e to the RT, because this compounds continuously, like always, right? And when things compound continuously, they in, they this, the, the interest increases, increases, increases. Now, when a bank, when you put your money into the bank, this is what the bank pays you, 1 plus R to the T, or R over 1 to the 1T, one type per year, because they don't want to pay you any interest. So this is low interest, this is high interest, and actually, as N gets bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger, you get closer and closer to continuous growth, and that's why this is the answer. It was a difficult question, probably doesn't even belong in here. I think I might have said that already, but it doesn't belong here. Uh, tough question. The rest of them are just backwards, and the last one's just wrong. This one's relatively straightforward, although I don't like the fact that they did this. But you have to remember, when you have two standard deviations, that represents 95.4%. Now, of course, New York State doesn't like accuracy, so they only want you to multiply by 0.95. And when you take your calculator and you multiply by 0.95, you get... 380. All right, so that's the answer to that one. This next one is not bad. We're going to square both sides and square this side. So what I get is b squared equals uh, 2b squared or not to be 64. I'm going to bring the b squared over. I get 0 equals b squared minus 64. I'll bring the 64 to the left side equals b squared. And I know when I take the square root, I got to remember to put a plus or minus. So I end up with plus or minus 8 equals b. Now I all of a sudden get real excited and I think, ah, you didn't fool me, you didn't fool me. Except maybe I did because all radicals must be checked. So what I did was um, I already did it. Nope, you can't see it. So I'm going to come over here to my calculator. And, oh, I shouldn't have gotten rid of that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take 8. I'm going to store it into B. 
And that's the left side. And the right side is the square root of 2b squared, or not to be squared. And I get 8. And then I'm going to take negative 8 and store it into this. And I'm going to hit it up here. Now, the right, the left side's negative 8. And if I type this in, the right's, oh, positive 8. So this is not the correct answer. The correct answer is choice 8. Alrighty then. This is exponential relationship. I thought this was a particularly kind of a tough question too. One exponential relationship. So you kind of had to see what was going on. This is going down by four, down by four, down by four, down by four, up by one, up by one, up by one, up by one. So this is why, this is just, well, whatever it is, it's linear. This one is squared, 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 and squared. So this is simply just y equals x squared. Cubed, 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 and cubed. You had to recognize this was y equals x cubed. And here's the one that's the problem. We, th I think this is the right answer. So what I want to do is I want to test it on my calculator. So I'm going to go into this. Actually, red x this. So what I'm going to do is go into my spreadsheet mode. And I'm going to go x, y. And we're going to go, was it 1, 2, 3, 4, 5? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 8, 4, 2, 1, point 5. And then I just want to look at the dots and see what's going on. So doc, insert, date and statistics, click on X, click on Y. And I can see clearly now this is exponential decay, it's declining. So it's exponential decay. decay. All righty. And so that's the one that is exponential. So here is the correct answer, choice one. Now, this question was particularly tricky, except for a couple of things, and I'll tell you why you should have known what was the right answer. First and foremost, let's say I make A equals 3. So, okay, this is 3. But if this is the root, then this would come from a pair of parentheses of A minus 3. So if I look down here, I can only pick things with A minus. So that means we're got to be one of those two. Now, you see three roots, one, two, three. So you might think it's choice one, but it is not because of this very special root right here. And you see how it comes down and bing, bounces off. That makes it a bounce point, and that makes this the right answer. Now, why is this the right answer? Well, let's say I said c was equal to four. Well, this number right here then is negative four. Well, what would I put in the parentheses? I'd put x plus 4 or x plus c. And that's truly why that is the right question. But it was kind of a tricky question. All right, moving on. The temperature in degrees in Fahrenheit from Times Square during the 10th of August can be predicted by the function blah, 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 where x is the number of hours after midnight. According to this model, predict 7 p.m. So from midnight, so that's 12 midnight, to 7 p.m. Let's see, 12 to 12 is 12 hours plus seven. That's 19 hours. So all I got to do is plug in 19 into my calculator. So I'm going to go 19. I always store things. I just think it runs into less problems. You also got to make sure you're in radiant mode. Otherwise, this will be a problem. You know what? I'm going to escape. I'm going to figure out. I bet this gives me the wrong answer. Let's see what we got. I bet you give me one of the other answers. 8 sine 0.3x minus 3 and then plus 74. I bet it's one of the other answers. 74.37, 74.37. It sure the heck does. Now let's put it in radian mode, which is where it's supposed to be. And we'll do this again, and you get the right answer, 77.4. So here we go. Once again, they tricked you. If your calculator was in the wrong mode, you got shafted on that one. All right, this one here, I would just use your calculator and your matrix operations or menu, algebra, solve a system of equations, solve a system of linear equations, three equations. All right, I'm going to look down because I, uh, x uh, plus y. Minus z 
equals 6. Remember, we'll look, this is another one we're looking for probably the not, correct? 3y uh, plus 2z equals negative 19. And finally, negative x uh, plus 4y minus z equals 17. So there's my answers. Negative 1, 3, and negative 4. Negative 1, 3, and negative 4. Ding, 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 ding. There's the answer. And every year we get this silly freaking question. This year they asked about weekly, so why not? 1.06 to the 52t. Okay, so that's that. That's not one of the answers. So what we want to do is we want to make it the same as this. So what we're going to do is 1.06 to the 1 over 52 to the 52t. But if I cancel those, I multiply these together. So all I need to do is figure out what this is. Oh, uh, excuse me. This would just go away and this would just be t. So really what I want to do is raise it to the 152nd inside. So that's all we got to do. You got to take 1.06, raise it to the, and I don't know why they continually ask this question, divided by 52. It's like they have fun with it. And there's the answer. 1.2834. Yep, there it is. All right, I guess that ends that. And we are all done with part ones. Come back for parts two through four. I thought these were exceedingly simple. You made some dumb mistakes, kiddos. At least my kiddos did. Didn't do great, as good as I would have hoped this year. But that's okay. Next year, next year's another year. All right, Kate, take care. And there's one really weird question on there.